victorious warriors win first and then go to war while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win this is a quote from the art of war by sun tzu which is a book that i'm sure plenty of you have heard of it's a book that can be beneficial to people in all walks of life whether you're male female whatever race nationality gender whether you're a zay a they or non-binary whatever you identify as it's a book that can simply lay a grid upon whatever situation you're going through and serves as a guide a beacon of light this quote applies to a particular topic that was discussed on this recent drake interview with dj simtex and it's a topic that has been beaten bloody. It's a horse that has been stomped to death a thousand times over. It's Meek Mill, it's the beef, it's back to back, it's charged up, it's Quentin Miller, it's ghost riding, it's and you've heard about it a million times. But as I've told you guys before, it was the single most important part of rap music in 2015. When a beef becomes the most important, most underscored event of a year within a genre of music, it will always be referred to to contrast other things. 2001, there's only one thing that people really speak about in rap music in 2001, and that's Jay-Z versus Nas. I believe that's the only other time where a beef has been the biggest thing that happened that year. Let's not bring up Tupac and Biggie. That wasn't a rap beef. That was real life. So he's asked the question of Meek Mill and his mindset after he had been exposed for all the Quentin Miller nonsense. And Drake basically says that he thought that this was something that Meek had been planning out for three months in advance. He was prepared. He was going to go to war with Drake. So Drake had to react. He came out with Charged Up. As we all know, we know what happened after that. It was Meek in the the Baby Soft tweet. There was no response. So through Drake's logic, he knew that his opponent wasn't prepared. So he had to step on his neck with back to back we all understand that the internet made this beef out to be something that it really wasn't this wasn't a level 10 level 10 in my opinion is ja rule versus 50 cent i think that is a level 10 of 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 humiliation to the fullest extent because after he was done with him he was rendered useless 50 mocked everything about Ja Rule it was a attack on his character he was a snitch it was a musical attack and it was just Ja Rule was just so fortunate that there was no Twitter there was no Instagram back then because this would have been a lot worse He would have been the first Meek and we would have been able to get more of a perspective on what this whole thing that happened to Meek really meant. Drake also mentioned in the interview that if you asked Meek, was this all worth it, he would probably say it wasn't. I disagree with that because you are familiar with the old saying, bad publicity is better than no publicity. Meek got tons of eyes on him when this beef was going down. And while at the moment it wasn't very beneficial for him, afterwards it really was. You know, Dream Chasers 4 sold more than it was projected to sell initially. I think it sold about 84,000 copies in its very first week and did about, uh, hard copies, I'm sorry, and did about 40,000 digital. It wasn't expected to do that. And that was just in November. So I don't think that this hurt Meek because I've always argued that I don't believe, and you guys can tell me I'm completely wrong about this, I just don't believe that Meek's core fan base cares that much about beef 
and lyrical credibility. I don't think it matters. I think that's the only scenario where somebody could be hurt afterwards by beef like this. And I also feel the same about Drake's fan base. As I told you guys in the past, when this beef happened, what Drake had to let people know is that he writes his own music because writing matters and he has artistic integrity within that. Most of his fan base doesn't really care. Of course, there are some hip hop heads that love Drake. That's understandable. They care. But most of his core isn't made up of those people. And it's the same with Meek. It's like with boxing and MMA. Now that you've been hearing the possibility of Conor McGregor going up against Floyd Mayweather, a lot of people have been bringing up the contrast between boxing and MMA. MMA, fans don't punish you for losing. It's okay to lose. Conor showed you that when he bounced back and he beat Nate Diaz a second time. It's not the same in boxing, and it's even worse in the case of Floyd Mayweather because his brand is being the undefeated, the greatest fighter of all times. Think of their respective fan bases, Meek and Drake, as MMA. There's no consequence to losing here. It doesn't matter after a course of time. If you'd like to compare somebody to the boxing aspect of you need to win, it's necessary, we think the greats. We think Eminem losing a battle would totally tarnish his entire legacy. Nas losing a battle would totally tarnish his entire legacy. Jay-Z losing a battle would totally tarnish his entire legacy. And fortunately for those two parties, it can go either way. It was an even bout between Jay-Z and Nas, so neither were hurt afterwards. People can say afterwards Jay-Z proved that he was the ultimate winner because he ended up employing Nas, but that's not the same as records, that's not music. So I don't think that it hurt Meek just like it wouldn't have hurt Drake. But once again, victorious warriors win first and then go to war, while defeated warriors go to war first and then seek to win. When you go for anything, when you pursue anything, you better damn well be prepared for it first. Because seeking it isn't getting it. It's not winning it. It's being prepared for it mentally and physically. Let me know what you guys think. I'll see you guys next time.